So the next thing that we're doing is building a search for the app that's gonna have pagination. So we're gonna start off with doing some stuff on the server and creating the query with that. But before I even get into coding that up, I wanna be able to actually search some items. Cause right now I've inserted like maybe two items and it's not gonna be helpful to be able to see um, and page through items if we only have two of them. So what I wanna do in this video is add some mock data so I have a nice big database and I can search lots of items. So to do this, I'm gonna use a site called Mockaroo. Uh, this is free, you don't have to even create an account. And how it works is you specify your field names. So here I have all the fields um, that we have in our database. Um, and then this maps uh, the, the, basically the fake data that I wanted to create. So I'll talk about the types in a second, but what happens is I can preview this um, and this will generate some SQL code and I can take this SQL and insert that into our database to get the data. So I'd recommend coming over to this site and you can put all of our fields in. Here are all the fields for the listing. Uh, if you have more or less, you can fill those in accordingly. And then you just click on this and you pick the type of thing that you want. So for example, we have UUIDs for the IDs and uh, they call them GUIDs here so we can use those. Uh, next, the name, I used company name. By the way, when you click on this, this is all the different types um, that you can do that generates fake data. So I can get fake city names, company names, all kinds of stuff. In this case, the name of my listings, I'm just gonna make company names. This is a custom list, so the category is either gonna be set to the value of house, apartment, or condo. Um, and then I want a dummy picture, so they have that as well. Uh, and that you'll notice I have wrapped this in quotations. The reason for that is uh, Postgres requires that when you have a uppercase letter. So we have an uppercase letter there and down here in the user ID, so that's why I have that around those two. Um, and the rest is pretty straightforward, so you can have words, and here you can specify all the different criteria that you want um, that you want your fake data to have. So if your description is gonna have uh, at least three words, but no more than seven, uh, and then the price is gonna be between 100 and 500, and I removed decimals, so it's just integers. Um, and then beds, guests are going to be one and five, and then I can get the latitude, longitude. The amenities, this is something that, uh, they didn't actually seem like there's a good thing to create an arrays of arrays, or arrays for Postgres, so I just set an empty array. That's how you do an empty array in Postgres, is just two brackets like that, and I made that a custom list. And then lastly, um, I grabbed a user ID. So for this, I went to my terminal, and I just connected to the database that we're using, and I did select all from users. So this will show you all your users, and so right now I just have a single user, and I copied that ID right here, so really all I wanna grab is the ID, so I can change that to select ID, and then I grabbed this ID right here, copied that, pasted it here. So all these listings are gonna be uh, created and be assigned to basically that single user that I have. Uh, if you want to, you can make this several user IDs by doing commas, that would work as well. So I recommend doing this, and then after you have that, what I said is I set the format to SQL and the table name to listings, and then I'm asking for 100 rows, you could ask for more, I think that's a pretty good to start off with, and I can always add more if I need to. And then again, I just hit preview, and then went over here to the SQL tab, and I just copied this entire thing, and we'll come all the way to the end. And then to actually insert this into my database, I just create a new file here, which I'm gonna call uh, mock.sql, paste it in, give that a save. So this is all my insert statements here. And to actually get this to be inserted into my database, so I'm gonna just select all from listings. You'll notice I have zero rows right now. And I'm gonna backslash Q to get out of the prompt and I'm gonna say psql, the name of my database, GraphQL TypeScript server, and then an arrow, and then uh, the name of it, so mock.sql. So what this will do is it'll take the insert statements in mock.sql and run them against this database here. Um, so if we do that, you can see all the insert statements. And if I reopen uh, the database, get rid of that at the end, and I select all from listings, I can see now I have a whole bunch of listings, whole bunch of random data. 
So let's see that on our front end. So I'm just going to restart the server here. Uh, reason being we're caching stuff. So if I come back over here to my listings, I can now see a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now you'll notice the pictures don't work. And if I open up the inspect, we can see why. So if I click on that, you can notice our image, we can see the source here. So here's the thing that we got, this dummy image. And you'll notice we are uh, pre prepending localhost 4000 images. So that's what's messing us up. Uh, we're expecting all the, the things in our database to be uh, not a full URL. So the code that we're doing this for is in our listings on the server, find resolver. So here's our listing. So here's what we do with the picture URL. We check if it exists. Um, if it does, what we do is we say um, the URL and we append the picture URL. So really I wanna add another condition to this and check whether there, if it's already a full URL. So I wanna say, um, if not parent.picture URL. So if the picture URL doesn't exist, we're just gonna return that picture URL. Otherwise, we want to check whether it has, um, basically, to know whether it's a URL or not, we're just going to check whether it has HTTP in it. So I'm going to say if parent.pictureurl.includes, and we're going to say HTTP, oops, then we're just going to return parent.pictureurl. Last but not least, if it made it through all those if statements, that means it's a picture that is not um, already have a full URL, so we're just going to prepend our URL and serve that image ourselves. So now, if I refresh this, we should get some images, and here we can see the images that we get. So here are all the dummy images that it gave us, and you'll notice if you want to, you can change what the size is of these. So it's giving me random sizes from this website and I can see a whole bunch of them. All right, so that's it for inserting our dummy data. We'll get started with actually querying and finding certain values from this dummy data in the next video.